Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Thomas John? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Thomas John Flanagan was born in Massachusetts on July 8, 1984. He is a self-proclaimed psychic medium who goes by the name Thomas John. So the name Flanagan is dropped there. Sometimes he calls himself the Manhattan medium. Thomas claimed that when he was four years old, he saw his grandfather, which normally would not be unusual for a four-year-old, but at this time his grandfather was dead. His grandfather wanted to figure out why a Rolex that he had owned when he was alive ended up with his best friend instead of his wife. So his grandfather was terrorizing a four-year-old to find out the disposition of his watch. His grandfather appeared to Thomas again at Thomas's seventh birthday, still complaining about that watch. Eventually the best friend died, the watch was never found. I pictured the best friend going to the afterlife and seeing Thomas's grandfather again. Pointing to his wrist, the grandfather is like, did you forget something? This experience with his grandfather was just one that revealed to Thomas his ability to be a psychic medium. He can not only talk to dead people, he can predict the future. Thomas started working as a psychic medium in his mid-twenties in New York City and Los Angeles. He facilitated in-person and online events and conducted private readings. In 2007, Thomas started performing as a drag queen in Chicago under the name Lady Vera Parker. In 2009, he was involved in some criminal activity. He posted ads on Craigslist featuring apartments that did not exist. Renters would put down security deposits only to have Thomas steal the money. In July 2009, he was arrested and charged with one felony count of theft and one felony count of theft by deception. Ultimately, he pleaded guilty to theft and computer fraud. He was sentenced to probation and given a fine. After this is when he dropped the name Flanagan and started referring to himself as Thomas John. He said he turned his life around since then. He suggested that his criminal activity helped him harness the ability to connect with dead people. In 2015, Thomas published a book titled Never Argue with a Dead Person, True and Unbelievable Stories from the Other Side. I'm compelled to agree with the unbelievable part. In this book, he offers 15 stories from clients to whom he provided services. In March of 2017, Thomas was exposed as a fraud during a sting operation executed by a magician named Mark Edward and a former studio photographer named Susan Gerbeck. Mark and Susan assumed aliases. They pretended to be a married couple named Susanna and Mark Wilson. The couple attended one of Thomas's psychic reading events. In advance of the event, they produced fake Facebook pages to support their aliases. Thomas conducted a psychic reading on Susan. He never realized her real identity. All the information that Thomas provided about Susan was from the fake Facebook account. He said that someone was making him aware of cancer. Susan raised her hand. He started talking with Susan about her fictitious dead brother, like saying that her brother was teasing her about being there with him, like being with a psychic medium. Thomas mentioned how her father-in-law had died and she and her brother had been raised in Michigan. At one point during the sting operation, Thomas seemed to become aware that something wasn't quite right. After talking for a while with Susan about her fictitious dead brother, Thomas started talking about Buddy, saying, who is that? Susan didn't know the answer to this and said it was her father, when her fictitious profile indicated it was her dead brother's dog. Thomas said he was being drawn somewhere else and walked away. Later, Thomas pretended as though he did not get caught. He suggested that for the sting operation to be a proper experiment, it would have to be conducted by scientists, not a former studio photographer at Sears. In July 2018, Thomas started working on a reality television show called Seatbelt Psychic. 
In that show, he is a ride-sharing company driver who delivers messages from beyond the grave to his passengers, who ostensibly have no idea that he's a self-proclaimed psychic medium. In June of 2020, Thomas was featured in another reality television show called The Thomas John Experience. At the time making this video, Thomas John continues to work as a psychic medium. Now moving to my analysis. Here are various items about Thomas John that stood out to me. Item number one is how Thomas frames his criminal history. Thomas John says that he has provided services to a number of clients and his reputation speaks for itself. He noted that several of his clients are fully aware of his past, but this has not impeded his career as a psychic medium. He claims his criminal history and his work as a psychic are not connected at all. I find it interesting that Thomas was convicted for taking money in exchange for providing something that didn't exist. In the case of fake apartments, that's illegal. But in the case of fake information about dead relatives, it's not. Perhaps Thomas just found a legal way of doing something he always wanted to do, separating people from their money without providing anything legitimate in return. Item number two is the appeal that Thomas has to celebrities. He claims to have provided services to a number of celebrities like Courtney Cox, Sam Smith, Goldie Hawn, Julianne Moore, Jennifer Lopez, and Stevie Nicks, which gives people just one more reason to be disappointed in celebrities. In addition to providing services to living celebrities, Thomas also talks to dead ones. He claims to have spoken with Anna Nicole Smith after she died. Item number three is the commercial value of being a so-called psychic medium. Thomas offers a wide variety of psychic services. His private readings are $475 for a half hour. In addition to his hefty and unjustifiable fee, Thomas charges an extra $100 if the customer wants to have a friend sit with them. This is not for a separate reading. It's literally just to have another person present in the room. Maybe having another person in the room drains the psychic energy or messes up the vibrations or something. Thomas has to work harder to make up the nonsense under those distracting conditions. For those customers who simply can't wait to talk to dead people, Thomas offers an emergency reading service, which of course comes with an additional charge. I was trying to think of situations that would constitute an emergency. I guess if somebody died and didn't leave the passcode to their laptop, that could be an emergency. Or maybe the dead person hid their car keys before they died, and the person who inherited the car is late to work, like they really need the keys now. I can picture this emergency reading where the customer is communicating through the psychic medium with this dead person, and the dead person is like, I love you, I miss being with you, I'm doing well here in the afterlife, and the customer is like, yeah, 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 where are the car keys? Thomas John also sells a variety of products, including healing bracelets, healing candles, and audio sessions, which I guess are pre-recorded messages. They have titles like Vibrational Enhancer, Grief Buster Meditation, and Grief Removal Energy Alignment Affirmations. Item number four is the TV show Seatbelt Psychic. This is on Lifetime. The premise of the show is that unsuspecting passengers climb into a rideshare vehicle and are stunned at the revelations the driver makes about their dead relatives. It's curious because these passengers never mention a destination, and they do not seem to be alarmed by all the cameras in the vehicle. Now, the show does take place in Los Angeles, which probably has the highest proportion of camera-laden ride-sharing vehicles in the country, but still, one would think that they would react in some way, like they would be a little bit surprised by those conditions. As it turns out, the unsuspecting passengers are actually part-time actors. This explains why they are not surprised. Item number five is how Thomas researches his customers. This is part of his hot reading technique, which of course he denies doing. During one webinar workshop that Thomas was conducting, he let his mouse pointer slip and revealed his personal computer screen. Curious individuals took screenshots, which revealed two obituaries, one for a person in Illinois and another in Wisconsin. 
Another screenshot shows a website which provides a confidential way to find people. Strange that a psychic medium would need to use those services. Item number six is the nature of Thomas John's amazing ability. On his website, he claims it is a gift that comes directly from God. He goes on to say that God is very powerful and would prevent Thomas from talking to spirits if God did not want him to do it. Thomas claims he can not only see dead people, but he can also hear them, touch them, and feel their emotions. If Thomas John's ability is from God, why does he use the internet to search for information about his customers? Is this the form of the ability? Like God came to him in a vision and said, I'm going to give you this amazing gift. Thomas is like, okay, how do I access it? Will it just suddenly appear? God responds, no, it's on the internet. I'll send you a link. When considering all the evidence in the case of Thomas John, it seems fairly clear that people approach him in one of three ways. As an entertainer, with no expectation that he has any idea what he's doing. As a fraud, he clearly researches his customers and then pretends as if he's talking to their dead relatives. Or as an actual clairvoyant. They believe he's really helping dead people to make sure their Rolex watches end up in the right location or resolving any number of other concerns they couldn't take care of when they were alive. For those who regard him as either an entertainer or a fraud, there is really no concern. Thomas John is not notable or significant in any way. However, for the last group, those who believe he's telling the truth, there is a danger of finding a false sense of hope. Much of the work of Thomas John and other self-proclaimed psychic mediums is focused on helping people deal with the pain of losing a loved one. When a person dies, people who care for them often feel as though something was left unresolved. This leads to a series of potential desires. For example, to communicate with the dead relative one last time, to know that everything is okay, to tell the dead person that they love them, or to hear the dead person reciprocate that feeling, or to receive absolution for wrongs committed against the dead person. This unfinished business can start to consume a person's time and energy. Out of desperation, they seek the help of a psychic medium who promises to be a bridge to the afterlife, when in reality, they are more like a conveyor belt on which the customer puts their money and watches as it transitions to the other side. Those are my thoughts in the case of Thomas John. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as an afterlife watch location service. Thanks for watching.